put it before. You know, most times, you know, most of the people that came out here to give me money, they did not come out here with their clear eye. So I need to rush and run. Because most of them is alcohol. Give them two hours. Wow. I pray for you. Husband is your portion. Receive it. Husband is here. Yeah. I pray for you. Which guy Android for me? Bros, buy iPhone now. Buy iPhone. What's, what's wrong with you? Imagine it's a before that I'm and you be like awesome. I've been in a situation before where I went for a show and the guys were just giving me money. I never knew the guys were robbers. Oh, wow. The way you're joking it inside. Wow, that's my guy. Thank you. Hey.
There is too much crime. My friend, do you know there is too much crime that even criminals are concerned? <laughs> you find two thieves discussing it, but we are many. We are many. <laughs> the government has to do something. <laughs> I have a friend who is a thief. His phone was stolen. <laughs> I have a friend who is a thief. His phone was stolen last week. He's a thief. <laughs> He called me and said he had six. I mean, I said you're one of them. <laughs> this man, he was talking on board on the side of the road. <laughs> yeah, that is a thief, madam. <laughs> you will steal from outside. <laughs> Listen, my problem is thieves in Uganda are annoyed. I don't know why thieves are annoyed. Somebody finds you, they take your phone and they beat you for nothing. <laughs> why are thieves annoyed in this country? There's a gentleman whose phone was stolen. He was talking on phone in Kampala. A boda boda came, grabbed the phone, took off. The man was here crying, hey, my phone, what do you do? They've stolen my phone. Five minutes later, the thief came back, slapped him. <laughs> we were all concerned. Why has the thief slapped the man? The thief looked at him and said, outside is iPhone, inside iPhone. Why are you confusing him? <laughs> you know you're misleading the public. This is. <laughs> You can be arrested. <laughs> uh, you people, the crime in this country is so bad. But there is one crime that has failed in Uganda. The crime of kidnapping. You see, my friend, kidnapping only works in countries that have money. Because you take somebody's child, you call them, you tell them, my friend, I have your son. If you don't pay, if you don't pay two million, I will not give you your son. Then you hear those people in America crying, oh please, I love my son, just please don't kill them, I'm gonna pay any amount of money. They may tell them, don't talk to the police. It's like, it's all right, I'm not gonna talk to the police. Then they meet the kidnappers, they give them money, they give him back his child. In Uganda, <laughs> my uncle, in Lera, his child was kidnapped. First of all, my uncle has 20 children. <laughs> they kidnapped one. He was left with 19. <laughs> My brother, is that a problem? Is that a problem? <laughs> he had 99% of his children. Is that a problem? <laughs> if you buy a tray of eggs and one egg gets spoiled, are you, do you have a problem? <laughs> this man, they kidnapped his child for two months. He was not even aware that his child was missing. <laughs> They had to call him one day, he said, hey, who is this unknown number who keeps the PPP? Then he answered, said, hello, Mr. Opio. said, who is this one here? said, Mr. Opio, you have a problem. said, ah, he thought it was this people of Amplon. I will pay you next week. Eh? <laughs> they said, sir, it is not Amplon. We are here to tell you we have your child. If you don't pay us the money, we are going to kill you. Which one? Which one? Which? What is your name? Brian. Brian. We have Brian. We shall kill him. Brian O'Kenno. Brian O'Kenno. Which one? The one is brown skin, likes dark skin. The one with dark skin. Say, hey, that one. You kill that one. You kill. We are okay. It is the first time that I saw him. <laughs> they called him back, they said, Mr. Kelo, we are Mr. Pio, we are serious. He said, I am also serious. They said, sir, if you don't give us two million, we shall kill your son. He said, what? Two million for Brian. <laughs> it is still a lot, it is still a lot. He said, sir, we shall kill him. He said, you have delayed. <laughs> I don't have this money for you, you must say, you kill him. <laughs> that is how bad the crime in this country is. But for me, Listen, my friend, there are things that are planned in Uganda. Let us first clap for the women in this house. Let us clap for the women. Uh, we have going to bring the beautiful women in the house tonight. If you're next to a beautiful woman, please clap for her. Yeah. Madam, no one is clapping. How is the situation at work?
<laughs> Listen, me, I have looked for money in Uganda and money has refused to find me. There is a time somebody told me, somebody said, Hila, there is this church, the pastors give money if you go and act as if you are possessed. I said, how much? He said, for every Sunday that you act as if you're possessed. You know those pastors who do fake miracles? Then they say, fire, you leave him. Then you are there and say, I will not go. <laughs> Yet you are just acting. Then after five minutes, you shake your head, then you say, I have gone. Then they say, oh no, hallelujah, God has done it again. They give you a hundred thousand. Do you remember, I went with my father two Sundays. We made 200,000. I said this business will work. <laughs> the third Sunday was the problem. You know, on Saturday we would meet and we practice. My madam, are you possessed? What is that? On Saturday we would meet and we practice. And they give everybody their disease. They're like, for you, you have liver cancer. When you come, they'll tell us the story. Then we pray for you, then you are okay. Then they looked at me and my father. They said, What of you will say for us, possession? We can manage. <laughs> possession is very easy. You just shake. Like, ah, ah, ah. Then you just speak. Have you realized people who are possessed speak very good English? <laughs> I will not leave this for the time. The devil knows who he is. Now, by the end of the rehearsals, we know everyone who we are going to work with on Sunday. The problem is, on this one Sunday, on this one Sunday, when the pastor called us, say, church, hallelujah, church, praise God, God is good, and all the time. At this very juncture, let us clap, clap for the Lord, let us clap for the Lord, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to ask any of you who's having challenges in life, kindly come forward and let us pray for you. Kindly pray forward. Then the pastor will get his handkerchief and he does like this. That is where now me and my father will fall down. <laughs> now, people in the crowd are scared and like, then the pastor comes and like, yo, why are you disturbing that man? Now, for that, we have to reply, we shall not go. <laughs> he said, these two are possessed, let us bring them. Then the ushers come and carry us. They bring us in front. On that day, my friend, it was a real person who was possessed. <laughs> for us, who were acting. When we came in front, we were still there, we shall not go. We shall not go. We saw somebody from behind there say, mm. Mm. I saw my father, I said, I don't know that demon. You don't know that demon. <laughs> the pastor looked at us and said, yeah, I don't know that demon. For us, we are not demons, but we that one looks to be me. The demon started walking in front of the demons. By the way, when a demon speaks in Uganda, that is a serious demon. If you got up and say, see, it's at the end, we say, yeah. The demon came to us. I am not going to go. Oh, no, see, you know, I'm going to go. Now, the problem is this demon also thought that we are demons. Yet for us, we are just acting. Now, the pastor brought holy water. He started sprinkling holy water. Leave him alone. You leave him alone. For us, we are there saying, we shall not go. We shall not. The demon looked at me and said, we should go. I said, I will not go. I will not go. <laughs> now, because they were burning this demon with real holy water, he was suffering in the body of that human being. This demon looked at me and said, yeah, you are suffering here. I said, even me, I am suffering. <laughs> then he said, let us exchange bodies. I said, ah, I'm okay where I am. I'm okay. I will not. <laughs> That day they are 100 pounds and refused. <laughs> Thank you so much guys for coming. I'm proud of your time.